player traits are important. They help add to a player's game in a way that can make all the difference. Can mean the difference between winning and losing, and that's not being over dramatic. Let me give you an example of how much a difference they can make. Let's talk about YouTube traits. Traits you need to be taught in order to make YouTube videos. One, uh, for me, shave every, at least every other day. Clearly not doing a very good job of. You need to have a deep voice. Luke, I am your... You gotta have a good smolder, of course. And you have to have great hair. But I don't think that's a trait that can be taught. Neither's the balding. The jokes aside, I'm excited to talk about player traits today, but before I do that, I wanted to ask you guys uh, a question or two. You see, I have an idea for something called an FM Academy. Now, this is for people that haven't played the game a lot or aren't necessarily comfortable with all aspects of the game, where I start from the very beginning and just walk you through how to play Football Manager. I want you to let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea, and if you think I should do another series with anything. Most of the video ideas I get come from the comments at this point, and I love that, so keep it going. Right, player traits. When I said these bad boys were the difference between winning and losing, I was not kidding. And in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me show you. When you're looking at a player in the base skin, it's these bad boys right here. It took me a, probably two editions of the game when I started playing to realize that those even existed, but they do and they dictate exactly how your player is going to handle certain situations. There are also just a lot of them in a lot of different categories. We're gonna run through each one quickly and what it requires, but we're gonna linger on a couple that I think can really help make the difference for you, especially in the match engine for Football Manager 20. This is also a good time for a Zealand public service announcement that you've heard many times. This whole player trait training is largely staff dependent. You don't get to do it yourself, so you have to pawn it off to your staff members, which means adding to your staff yourself and cultivating your own staff is as important as ever. Back to the action. One last tidbit before we dive into them. It is believed to be the same as all other training where it's, it's gonna be easier at a younger age. So try and anticipate the growth of young players, what type of player they're going to grow into being and don't necessarily give them player traits based off of the attributes they just have in that moment because they might very well develop past that. But if you can't anticipate, it'll be easier to put those traits on players. Right, let's begin. Kitanov, please. Movement training, you see we got five sections. We'll go to movement training. This can be a little overwhelming. I promise I'm gonna hit on each one and what you need in each section. Now, if it's not overwhelming for you, that means you're in the other camp. You're excited and you're about to add 15 traits to some dude. Keep in mind that there is usually a limit to how many traits you can add to some person. In my experience, that has been four or five, so you do want to be selective. Now, you can untrain traits, but it's just as difficult as training traits onto a player. You have to go through a whole training process to remove a trait, and there are actually a couple of traits that can't be trained on that you have to work on removing, uh, or else they're going to be a detriment to the team. But just keep in mind, you aren't gonna be able to add all of these to a player, nor would you want to. And we start in the movement section with the three dribbling directions. You can dribble the ball down the left flank on the regular basis, right flank on a regular basis, and dribble the ball through the center of the park on a regular basis. For this, you're obviously going to want high dribbling. This isn't just the dribbling attribute, technique, flair, anticipation, decision-making, all of those play into whether somebody is a good dribbler or not either. Uh, one thing that I did overlook on this for a time is you also want someone with pretty good athleticism and a decent work rate so that they are able to take advantage of this because if somebody's a good dribbler but not athletic, they're only going to be able to take people on in shorter spurts and they're not going to be able to decimate uh, the entire field or really change the position of the match from one end of the field to the other in one of these three running directions. As for which side you want them to dribble on, it's really position dependent. Where are they going to be playing and where would you like them to run with the ball? Like your right wing, you wouldn't want to have them dribble the ball down the left flank. It just wouldn't make any sense. You obviously also don't want to put the dribbling thing on more defensive players that you want to have significant responsibility. You want it on a winger or an attacking midfielder and 
maybe a, a striker if you've got somebody who's surprisingly good at dribbling at that position, but that's basically it. Next is try and beat the offside trap. For this, you're definitely going to want someone with athleticism. This is going to be a striker that is just going to be pushing against that back line, but they also need to have intelligent movement in order to pull this off. And that hinges on not only the off the ball attribute, but anticipation and decision making. It's important to note, by the way, that when I say it's going to help them pull this off, one, the higher their attributes are in the sections I'm talking about, the easier it's going to be for them to learn the trait and the easier it's going to be for them to execute the trait. Next on our list is the moves into channels. This is something you want to do with your primary creator because this person has to be uh, just a creative force. That's going to require decision making, anticipation, teamwork, vision, and uh, a little flair, obviously. Now, depending on how you want to play is going to dictate what somebody that moves into channels uh, is gonna have to do particularly. Sometimes they don't need to be able to dribble at all. Sometimes they do need to be able to dribble, but they definitely need to be able to pass because they're gonna be making horizontal runs in between the defenders instead of vertical runs trying to get past the defenders. So you just have to be ready for them to receive the ball and get rid of it, however that's supposed to happen. After that is one that I almost never use and it's hug the touch line on a regular basis. This is for someone to drift into particularly wide areas of the park in order to really stretch play when you are in possession. You're going to want good crossing, that's teamwork, vision, passing, crossing, all those attributes come into play and a good crossing ability because if they're going to be influencing the offensive phase of play while hugging the touchline, that's just something that is going to be necessary. They'll also need the general basic athleticism to recover. So you won't want a snail who's hanging out right at the touchline and then they have to get all the way back and it's going to take them half an hour. Some of these are more tactical and that's definitely one of the more tactical ones. There's nothing that's really going to deter somebody from being able to hug the touchline unless they're like a central midfielder. Continuing with the fairly self-explanatory ones, there's cuts inside on a regular basis. For inverted forwards, inverted forwards, inverted wingers or inside forwards, this can be a useful trait. A couple of extra things you're going to want to keep in mind. Person definitely needs a base level of creativity in order to create something once they get into that space. They probably need to be able to pass or just dribble their way through everybody and balance. Balance is something to look out for when somebody is bringing the ball inside from the wing. This is another, I don't want to say a primary creator kind of trait to give a player, but obviously somebody that gets the ball on the wing and cuts inside is going to be the catalyst in attacking moves. Then there's a trait I would consider a, a niche trait, and that's playing with his playing with his back to goal regularly. That's for either big target men or forwards that you actually want to play as kind of a false nine. They're going to be facing the ball instead of the goal much more often. It makes them easier easier for them to receive passes at their feet, which means they definitely need decent first touch, uh, or they're going to need a big physical presence that's strength, jumping reach, balance also important here, uh, and an aerial presence if you want them to just be a target man. But if you want them to be a facilitator, they're going to need dribbling and creativity and passing and all the things that uh, I mentioned the attributes that go along with those. I've honestly never used it, but it seems nice. Then there's come deep to get the ball as often as the opportunity allows. This is also for more forward players that helps them get involved. I'm actually considering putting this on Mr. Herman Gielmaiden because he's a deep lying forward for me. And you'll notice that once you start to link up different attributes with different activities in the game like dribbling, or passing that once you read these traits you are automatically able to convert in your mind what you're probably going to need and that can start to happen with come deep to get the ball what are you going to need movement creativity and passing you need somebody that is able to get back uh, intelligently find space to get themselves on the ball and there's somebody that you want to have on the ball somebody that is going to be able to pick out those impressive passes or perhaps in your system somebody that's going to try and take the team on while off the dribble speaking of dribbling then you have run with the ball more often and run with the ball occasionally i'd like to think these are self-explanatory again dribbling is going to be dribbling technique anticipation decision making flair and uh, balance i also look at balance for dribbling Agility helps, obviously. Everything helps. Then there's play one twos to help the tempo of our game. The tempo part, just forget about it. Playing one twos, you need somebody that's got good control of the ball, obviously, uh, which would be first touch and technique, passing and technique for somebody that's good uh, at passing, then anticipation, decision making, off ball and teamwork, things that help attacking movement, because everybody knows what a one two is. You lay the ball off 
and then the other player passes it back to you because you're running into space. It's just painful to have an American try and explain this, but you know what I mean. Now the one that you'll get recommended all the time. It's try to knock the ball past opponents when taking them on. This is for somebody that is not great at dribbling, but is good at being fast. If a player's greatest asset is speed, and this is normally for wingers and wingbacks, particularly wingbacks because they will be more uh, trained to play defense instead of actually dribbling by someone. Knocking the ball past the opponent will teach them how to beat somebody off the dribble and help create plays for you even though they don't know how to dribble that well. I hate putting knock the ball past the opponent on people that have high dribbling ability is then I feel they can just use their athleticism as something that augments their dribbling. But if you don't have great dribbling, and I mean f your dribbling attributes four or five less, then your, your agility, acceleration, pace, then you probably want to knock the ball past opponent. Obviously dribbling, like I talked about earlier, is not the only thing that determines being a good dribbler, but it's the most significant part of it, so it's just a good barometer for knocking the ball past opponent or not. Then there's what I'll call the fox in the box player trait. It's stay inside the penalty area and not really leave it. Once they have the opportunity to go inside the penalty area, that's what they're going to do, and they're going to stay there. Obviously, you need a good physical presence, strength, and balance to play in. Probably you want a good aerial presence that's just be jumping reach. Uh, you also, if you're playing a more technical game and you're just trying to work the ball into the box and you want that person to always be available as a target, you want first touch, uh, finishing, and technique as well, so for goal scoring, and maybe heading and technique, you know, just to be able to finish the ball off if you're going for the real static target man type of fox. Then there's the specific you can cut in from certain wings. And now we're done with the longest section, so you've already made it this far. Congratulations, you're learning things, hopefully. It's at times like these where I'd like to remind you if you've enjoyed the video so far, if you found it informative and what have you, you can hit the like button. It'd be greatly appreciated by me. You can also subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this showing up uh, in your feed. That obviously would mean a ton to me. And if you hit that little notifications bell, I might just pass out. You get a notification every time we post a video twice a week. Uh, if you want to hang out with me more, I stream on Twitch four times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. If you feel like that fits your schedule, I'm normally playing Football Manager. You can follow at the link listed down below, uh, and you can also go to a URL bar and type this thing up on the screen because why not? Now we're on to our next section of training, which if I am not misled mentally is going to be passing. So you're going to want to find your best technical coach. I clearly don't have any good technical coach, but that's okay. I'm in Belarus. Let's go to passing. Now the first one here is one you're going to get recommended a lot. Let's try to play a simple passing game. You want to put this on center backs that are just bad at passing. Maybe you've got no-nonsense fullbacks that are bad at passing. You've got a goalkeeper who couldn't pass to save his life. You want these guys to just not try to make complicated passes because then they will turn the ball over. It's obviously something that will heavily limit a player, but it is helpful in the long run. A lot of my center backs, particularly in lower leagues, get play simple passing game because we just want them to give the ball to someone who can pass. The opposite of that is someone who is a great passer, someone who's got the anticipation, the decision making, uh, the balance, the passing, the technique to try killer balls whenever possible. I love this one too. It's put on all of my great midfield passers and creators to pick out any pass that they see fit. It removes the inhibitions for them. I look at it as making them or encouraging them to be more creative while the rest of the team is more structured around them. Now, if you want to limit a player's passing, but you don't want to completely take away their ability to create at all, you can avoid attempting through passes. This will prevent a player from, or largely prevent a player from attempting passes into space to put players up and on the ball. And it really will limit your ability to transition quickly from one point to another, but it will also help you maintain possession more. So what do you want to do? Now there's an interesting one, one that I've gone to war with before, and that's to look for the pass rather than the shot. If somebody has good anticipation, decision-making, teamwork, general passing ability, but they're, they're not good at finishing, no matter what the position, then you probably want this on them. It means they're more likely in a goal scoring chance to pass it on to somebody else for a better chance. It's a bit of a double-edged sword for an obvious reason. Even blind squirrels find nuts. The even bad goal scorers can score and you're turning down a good chance for what? Hopefully a better chance. It's not something that I'll ever intentionally train onto somebody uh, you will probably be able to find better reason than I to train it onto somebody, but sometimes players just come with it. 
out of the youth academy and I'll leave it on them. I won't worry about training it off of them. The next are, are two more that are going to seem to fit into a previous category, like try killer balls whenever possible and what have you. But they start attempting some long range passes. So this this is different than trying killer killer balls because the killer balls are the riskier passes. The the tries long range passes is really something to fit a more direct style of play. But if you're a playmaker in a direct team, it's something that you probably want to have. You're obviously going to want good good passing ability and decent decision making and all the creative stuff that I've talked about before. That goes almost hand in hand with switch possession to the other side of the field. I put switch possession to the other side of the field on a lot of different players, usually players that are playing at one fullback position and I want them to be able to switch it to the other, vice versa, or maybe you put it on a holding midfielder who drifts into different sides of the field. Uh, it's a very useful trait. It allows you to find the space and it makes the player look to find the space on the opposite side of the field that so often goes unnoticed in football manager games. Obviously for that, you're gonna want your vision and your basic passing ability, your, your anticipation, your decision-making, your passing, your technique. Sorry, needed to catch my breath. Let's go. Then there's you want the ball into your feet more often. This is just for people that aren't necessarily good in the air uh, and it's for people that are primary creators. They're gonna be running at the person with their hand down like I want the ball and they get the ball into their feet more often. Primary creators. Every level's got primary creators, so I'm not going to tell you to look at a specific attribute. Whether, whether your primary creator is somebody who's just great at dribbling, whether it's somebody who's just great at passing, it's a ball-moving midfielder, or somebody that's just got a bunch of flair, anticipation, decision-making, and you know they're going to do something with it when they get the ball, then you can go ahead and throw that on them. That movement's important, though. Off the ball and anticipation and teamwork, you have to be able to move to the space to get the ball to your feet. Then there's the one attribute for people that are just good at crossing the ball. Cross the ball early whenever the opportunity arises. This is just for people who can cross well. The first opportunity they have to put that ball in the box, they're going to do it. You want good crossing, good passing, good teamwork, vision, and anticipation along with technique. Uh, obviously, all those don't have to be 20, but you want to take all of those into account before you're telling somebody to hoof the ball into the box every time because that will all determine how good the cross is going to be. Just like that, we're already done with two sections. See, we knew this was going to be, I'm already getting lightheaded. This is going to be long, but now we're going to go to finishing and we'll go with Yasser al -Katani. He's a good offensive coach. I like how I'm picking and I'm not even assigning a player trait. Dedication. There are always large amounts of complaints about the finishing in Football Manager games and that has not changed with Football Manager 20, obviously, and this is where you might be able to fix those problems. I'm gonna tell you how, but we're not starting with the one that'll fix the problems, we're starting with free kicks. And I don't have the opportunity to give you an example often of, of somebody from my Belarusian team that is a perfect fit for a certain at a, a trait. I forget the words all the time. But Bubba Kebe, who is a real player in the game, and hopefully you'll be able to find him and sign him, has 18 free kick uh, and 15 long shot. And that makes him trying long range free kicks. That player trait is just, he has it. I trained it onto him. And you know what? It's amazing. And he hits the poster scores like every time. Then there's try long shots whenever possible. Fairly self-explanatory. Do you want the person to shoot from distance? If you do, there you go. Then there's a pretty useless one. It's try to lob the keeper when one one-on-one. -on -one. Now this match engine's got a better lob mechanic than any other game we've seen. So I suppose it's not completely useful anymore. What you're gonna want is good goal scoring ability. That's finishing technique composure. That's goal scoring ability. Then anticipation, decision making, and flair for your creativity. The next one's the one I'm gonna recommend if you're struggling to score goals. This one or the one after that. And it's try to round the keeper when one-on-one. -on -one. Now we get a lot of one-on-ones in the match engine when they're looking to get around the keeper. It's not your clean Torres all the way around the keeper sort of situation, but when they look to get around the keeper and to create better angles to put the ball into the back of the net, you just score more goals. What you're gonna need for this is a decent ability to dribble, not great, but you need a decent ability to dribble. Uh, agility and acceleration and balance definitely help, and obviously your composure finishing and technique are all going to be important. Composure is definitely key in this one. Then for those that lack the composure, there's try to blast the ball into the back of the net. Uh, if you've got a finisher, a finisher, a finisher, a striker who is struggling to put the ball into the back of the net and isn't actually that great of a finisher, 
well then this this is probably the direction that you want to go because they'll get a lot of opportunities to score and if they hit the ball hard they get a better chance of scoring this is really what helps out strikers with poor creativity or poor composure poor composure in particular blasts the ball into the back of the net uh, it's also useful for people that have long shots in certain cases. I've heard that said. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but it's something to consider. If a guy's taking a bunch of long shots, the harder he hits it, maybe the better chance it has to go in. Then you have rifle free kicks in, which is more of a connoisseur's item if that's how you want your people to take their free kicks. I know you're like, he skipped one. Places shots into the corner of the net. Only put this on people you're very comfortable with as goal scorers anyways, because it will make them even better, but it also takes some power off the shot. A place of shots was actually my preference for years, but you need to be a very good finisher overall, good finishing, good technique, and good composure in order to pull it off. Attempt first time shots, which is a very technically difficult thing to do. It's very easy to hit and miss on attempting your first time shots from a bunch of different positions. But if a player has very high technique and is just generally a very good goal scorer, it's worth trying to see if they can learn it uh, because it can catch goalkeepers and defenders just completely out of position if they're taking the ball first time, especially with regularity. I mean, that's devastating. Then there's the ever useless attempting overhead kicks when the situation arises. Uh, I mean, you have to be an unbelievable player in general. You have to have excellent finishing. You have to have a tremendous anticipation to be able to see that opportunity coming and take advantage of it. Uh, but really, even when a player has this trait, you're going to see maybe one goal like this a season. A more things, a different thing should take precedence in a training workload. But sometimes you'll have a player come through that has the trait naturally, and that's cool. Last one is consider taking fewer long shots for those that are challenged in taking long shots. Kind of similar to pass instead of shoot, but for midfielders. The last two, they, they don't have as much sheen uh, or as many options. In the defending section, you're only going to see three options, and there's really only two that I use on a regular basis. The, the bottom one, which is mark opponents tightly, that is obviously a valuable skill. You need to have intelligence, and you also need to have basic marking ability and that encompasses marking anticipation decision making and positioning physical presence of strength and balance that also helps and if you're playing in a higher line acceleration and agility help if you're playing in a deeper line jumping reach and heading help that's just with defensive stuff in general now the other two are tackling base there's throw yourself into tackles and stay on your feet when tackling a player word of warning about throwing yourself into tackles you want this to be a very good tackling player obviously somebody that has strength somebody that has tackling ability somebody that's able to put together the timing to make the play but you probably don't want it to be on a defender uh, it's good for defensive midfielders i would say and then stay on your feet when tackling a player this i normally will put on wing backs with low aggression because they're not necessarily going to be wanting to get wanting to be stuck in anyways so if they hang off, they keep the player in front of them, they'll be able to force it to somebody on the defense that is able to take the ball away. Then last but not least for Mr. Herman Gilmiden is the technique training, where they have added a few more things over the years, which I appreciate. The basic ones that have been here for a while are avoid using weaker foot whenever possible. I would recommend avoiding this almost at all costs. Uh, you have the opportunity to develop a weaker foot. If you do not have... Uh, according to your coach, the chance to develop a player's weaker foot, then you might consider telling them to avoid it, but it will obviously limit them significantly. I've only ever done it to a goalkeeper. And speaking of goalkeepers, there's develop a long, flat bullet throw. If they're very good at throwing, uh, if throwing is one of their strongest attributes, you can equip them with this, and it will make them even better at it. The weaker foot thing takes a little time to show up though. So if you're training to develop a weaker foot and it doesn't pop up right away, you just click development tactics to see it, uh, then don't worry, it, will, it appears over time. I don't know why, but it just does. Then we get into the newer ones. And one that I like a lot uh, is something that will rely on the dominant foot, but not as much as avoid using the weaker foot whenever possible. It's to look to move the ball to the stronger foot before dribbling. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be dependent on that stronger foot, but they're going to search for the opportunity to get that ball to the stronger foot before dribbling. I have actually put this on a couple of players. I have found that it's been fairly effective for players in particular that are out on the wings, and I want them to get it to that certain strong foot. 
to attack in the angle that I want them to attack from, and that stronger foot is good, and the weaker foot is at least weak or lower, I think you can you can make hay with this trait. Then there's curl the ball with the outside of the foot. This is just a high, high level of technical proficiency uh, and anticipation, decision-making, flair, teamwork, creativity stuff. The last two are a little unnecessary to train on players. I've signed multiple players that have tried to beat man repeatedly when the opportunity arises. Some, pe some people with great creativity uh, and dribbling ability are going to just have this trait naturally. And then there's try a few more tricks and skills whenever the opportunity arises. This obviously has to do with dribbling and creativity as well, but just at a higher level, I think, even than trying to beat the man repeatedly. I have never seen a player with tricks and skills whenever the opportunity arises. It's new, and I would imagine it's just on some of uh, the top players in the world. And you might want to put it on one of the top youngsters in the world that has the opportunity to be just absolutely insane. But I imagine it's pretty similar to taking bicycle kicks. Beating man repeatedly is somewhat useful. Tricks and skills whenever the opportunity arises. That's for fun. So if you want to have some fun, you have that opportunity in the training workload. Say la vie. I actually really, I don't even know what that means. Now it's something just random to keep in mind. I'm going to bring myself back up for this. There are a few that cannot be taught, but are just learned by certain players. There's argues with officials, which happens to players with high aggression. There's tries to play way out of trouble. Uh, there's dwells on the ball. Now these can be untrained, but they cannot be learned. One thing you will want to keep in mind is if you don't want to pass those traits down, when those players are mentoring, they can pass those traits down to the people that they're mentoring. So just be careful or else you're going to end up with, you know, five people that argue with officials if that really aggressive guy happens to be great for you. Get it? Got it? Good. Because that's just about it. If you want to see this in written form, there is a great article on guide to fm that i will have linked down in the description that you can reference at any time even though i'd prefer you watch this video like a thousand times just uh to <laughs> just kidding i hope this helps you uh with your player trait questions i didn't know how to wield them properly for years and i've been wanting to make this video for a while but i hadn't been quite sure how i was going to do it in a somewhat time efficient manner because we all know that is one of my greatest struggles in life i will see you soon hopefully on twitch and hopefully on another video. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy your player traits. Please one person train tricks and skills and tell me how it goes. I'm so curious.